Welcome back. Our summer survival week continues with some life-saving information. According to the American Red Cross, more than 1,600 people suffer from cardiac arrest each day in the U.S. That means every day someone near you may need your help at any moment. Knowing CPR could save a life, emergency medical physician Dr. Samson Davis returns to help us understand the importance of knowing how to administer CPR. Dr. Yes. Davis, welcome yes, back. Thank you. Okay. It's great to be back. Thank you. What is the difference between a heart attack and cardiac arrest? I was under the uh, delusion that they were the same thing. Yeah, very good question, and most people are. So a heart attack is a circulation issue, is when you get a blockage in the vessel around the heart that causes the heart attack. So you get the chest pain, the shortness of breath, the arm, the arm pain, yeah. whereas okay. cardiac arrest is the heart stops beating completely, whether it's an abnormal rhythm or whether the heart attack led to that, the heart isn't beating at all. So that's a cardiac arrest. Is there a, a one that's worse than the other? Or, or are both they both bad. equally horrible? I think they're both pretty bad. Okay, I don't think you it. want either one in them okay, because your it. choice. What's got the it. percentage of people that are saved, that survive uh, after receiving CPR? You know, CPR saves lives. 10% uh, people survive uh, from cardiac arrest, 10% only. Okay. With doing CPR, only hand compressions on the chest, you increase that survivability two to three times up to 40%. Okay, so super wow. important. Super important. How, how long? Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry, go ahead. Uh, you go. Yeah, how long can... <laughs> How long can the brain and the heart go without oxygen? So, Mark, it's, it's four to five minutes. Not 45, but four minutes. Four to five, to five minutes. minutes. So you got to act fast. you got to act fast. So each second counts. Okay. okay. So let's get started. Yeah, sure. Um, so we should get down here, yeah? Yes, yes. So we get down by the person. This okay. is a person. Okay. <laughs> um, by the way, disclaimer, this is not a CPR class. You are not CPR these are just the by these watching are, yeah, this. These are just the highlights, <laughs> yeah. okay? Okay. All right, so what should we start with? So you notice somebody's unresponsive, whether you're at the gym, restaurant, the first thing you want to do is uh, have someone call 911. If mm -hmm. you can't have someone call 911, you take your phone out, you put it on speaker, you dial 911. Oh, got it. That's Perfect. A, and then you want to grab an AED if it's handy. Most okay. public places have AEDs available. So you want to grab one or have someone grab it. Then you want to tap the person, are you okay? So you want to tap them, say you're okay. Are you okay? okay? And if they're not responding, they just go look at them. So you, you tap them, you look, you see if the chest wall is rising. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if not, you can feel for a pulse, right? For a, okay. So now you want to feel a pulse, you want to feel for the carotid, but on ourselves, we can feel for a pulse. So go right by your windpipe, right? Yeah. You can feel your windpipe, yep. go right behind it, and you should feel your carotid artery. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And so if there's a pulse, then you know they do have a heartbeat and you're just waiting for 911 to come. If not, okay. then you want to start CPR. Okay. Once you establish that there's that it's that CPR is required, what do you do? So once you establish CPR is required, you want to take your dominant hand, I'm a righty, okay. and you want to put it on the chest right between the nipple line, okay. and you want to take your non-dominant hand and interlock mm -hmm. in between your fingers. Then you want to keep your elbows locked okay. and your shoulders locked, so okay. you're directly over the person and you start compressions. And you want to go about two inches deep. And you don't want to never like hesitate to sort of press hard and press fast because it's important. You know, you're not going to hurt the person. Okay. You want to do at least two uh, two uh, uh, compressions per second, so about 100 to 120 uh, compressions per minute. Okay. And how about mouth to mouth? When so mouth to mouth, I recommend if you know what to do. It's, it's, uh, people are afraid enough to do this. So mouth to mouth is rescue breathing. Uh -huh. And so the way to do that is you pretty much grab the person's chin mm -hmm. and you tilt it backwards. You put your dominant hand or your uh, free hand on their forehead and you pretty much lean in. You take a deep breath in and you blow out. Okay. Right? right. You should see the chest wall rise while doing so. So as you're breathing into their mouth, you're looking at their chest wall simultaneously. Mm -hmm. But we recommend just hand-only compression for those who are inexperienced okay. simply because it saves lives. Okay. Right. Um, common mistake when it comes to CPR? Uh, hesitating. Hesitating. Ah. We all are fearful. We see somebody collapse. We find that in most collapse or, or, or uh, cardiac arrest happens in the home, and the older we get, the less likely we're likely to do something for the person. And what's the difference between CPR on an adult versus a child or an infant? So if we're doing rescue breathing, you want to give the child more breaths more frequently, uh -huh. and the deaths of the compression is a little less. Less. But also, the smaller the child, you may move from two hands to one hand, uh -huh. like or so. Is there ever, like, fingers? You could do fingers for infants. Mm -hmm as such, and then you also could take your two thumbs, wrap the chest wall of the infant, and push in as such. Got it, okay. Uh, when we return, we're gonna learn how to save a life using 
and AED. Stick around, you're not gonna wanna miss them. Welcome back. We're with ER Dr. Samson Davis, and we've been discussing when and how to use CPR to save a life. Another way is to treat someone who isn't breathing or doesn't have a pulse is with an AED. Commonly known as a defibrillator. Defibrillator, right? automatic external defibrillator. Okay. okay. How do you know it's time? So you always want to grab if you have to do CPR. I, I know you remember the uh, athlete, Damar Hamlin, who had the cardiac arrest. Yes, yes. This of course. This saved his life. Saved so you, his life. You always want to grab it. It's idiot proof. You just want to grab it and you want to place the pads on a person's chest because what it does, abnormal heart rhythms, ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation, it shocks the person back into a normal rhythm. Okay. okay. Can so, you show us how to yeah. use sure, it? Sure, sure. Okay. So the first First thing again is so easy and uh, idiot proof. I call it idiot because I don't know how to do these things. So it always <laughs> helps me to feel comfortable when something gives me instructions. So you open it, and it's going to tell you exactly what to do. Okay. Alt mode. Ah. Oh, Remove yeah. all clothing from patients. So we pull chest. back the, the clothing from the chest here. Okay. Pull red handle to reveal pads. So great, you can pull the red handle Look there. Look at pictures on pads. And you can see it tells you where Apply to put the pads. Apply pads to bare skin. So you want to peel. Exactly as shown there it in goes. the pictures. And you want to put that exactly Press where it shows it. Firmly. Right. Right here. there. Yep. Got it. And then you want to press that press there. It firmly. Pull exactly. Red and then that one. Pads. And Look you want to put that to the side. On pads. You want to go mainly wow. right there. Yeah. Yep. Right there. It's really, exactly as shown in the pictures. It's really talking you through it. Press pads. So it tells you everything what to do. Okay. Once the chest pads are there, it won't tell us what to do now because there's no heart rhythm at all. Okay. But if there was an abnormal heart rhythm okay. that was happening, like a ventricular fibrillation, it would tell you to deliver shock. So you tell everybody to clear. Clear. And it would deliver the shock. And ideally, in a perfect world, what happens most often, a person responds and they come okay. back. Okay. Wow, we have, like, like we said before, we have three of these in our building. Where, where else are you most likely to find these? these? So they're becoming more and more common. I've Airports, seen them. Yeah. Restaurants, schools, yeah. Uh, religious gathering facilities, uh, gyms. So you, yeah. they're becoming more and more common, and the goal is to increase them everywhere. Yeah, they should be everywhere, I yes. think, especially if they do so much good and can save lives like that. Yes. Um, what about, it, like, is it state to state? Well, state to state, I think it varies. Is what I don't know the, the what exact the laws and are. right rules are, but at the same time, the common gathering area, sports events, concerts, mm -hmm. you have to have an A and D is required. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. This is really helpful. Thank you, Doc. Appreciate yeah. it. Always For more information good to see you. about Dr. Davis, CPR and AED, go to our website. Come next. We're going to open up that inbox. Stick around. Who's That's gonna really